welcome back to Ask the Professor with Terry Cooper, the Texas RV professor. I'm Dave Dufour, and we are talking about air conditioners in this episode. I'll tell you what, nothing is more miserable than being in an air condi- being, being in being in an air conditioner, being in an RV in the summer when it's de- deadly hot and the wind's not blowing, and neither is your air conditioner. And isn't that that and and are there are some things that we can do to uh, minimize that from or minimize the possibility of that happening, right? Absolutely. You know, it's amazing when you get the phone call. These people are in a panic. You know, make it go <laughs> away. Make this heat go away. Right. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's right. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, just running a fan doesn't quite do it, does it? So no. what what's the principle that we're talking about here? And for well, what what can we do? to make sure that uh, the air conditioners last longer and, and work better while they last? Well, believe it or not, it's just a little bit of maintenance. That's really the big issue. And then watch the voltage we use. And if you have those two things, you do a little maintenance and watch the voltage, these babies will last a long time. And when we say airflow is everything, that is no joke. You'd be surprised how many times a technician will pull that filter down and that thing will be so clogged up that it's not allowing very much air at all through there and people are complaining and we just can't understand why the air conditioner is running uh, it's running up the electric bill but it's not cooling It's because it's not getting any airflow it has to have air, good airflow coming in in order to get good airflow going out okay, so, so that's this- why we always recommend everybody clean those filters and you know I have the questions come up all the time about well can I do this can I do that and it all really just clean the filter and right. that's really about it the uh, the uh, uh, I, I would assume that since a lot of RVers also travel with pets, that uh, pet owning RVers maybe have to do this a little bit more often. <clears throat> oh man, you're going into treacherous ground here when you start talking like that, Dave. Hey, I'm a veterinarian well, I'll, I'll son. I know all about cat hair. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I have gone and made service calls before that they had had cats, and when you take the filter down. You literally pull a little kitty blanket off the filter, yeah. and it's just because it's all clogged up. You'd swear another. Unfortunately, cat lived the there. other culprit is if you have a heavy smoker, you know, uh-huh. cigarette smoker. They really cause a lot of problems with these filters as well. Now, these filters can be just you know washed with water. Is that it, or can you do you have to sometimes just replace them? Well, I've seen them so bad you have to replace them, but for the most part, a little soap and water in the kitchen sink or some place where you can get access to running water. Mm-hmm. Soap it up, rinse it, and then just let it set out and dry, and you can put it back in there and you're ready to go again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I say, after a period of time, they, you know, you may have to do a replacement, but for the most part, if you just change them, clean them, they'll go. They'll go a long time. Mm-hmm. The other issue when we say airflow is is the coils. Uh, you know, the coils are nothing more than a radiator on this air conditioner. In other words, if we bring air across these coils and we strip the moisture and the heat out of that air, we're going to drop the temperature. And that's what we're sending back into the environment. Well, somewhere we've got to take that heat and displace it, put it away from the environment where we're working, where we are. Mm-hmm. And that's when we send it to the outside set of coils. Now, if you run into situations where, say, you get into a hailstorm, you bump into a tree, something that bends those fins, uh, it's going to cause some serious problems for you. And so it's going to block the airflow. And so we use, uh, you know, I teach my technicians and, it's, and teach a lot of the consumers that are doing our RV maintenance classes, teach them how to go out there and constrain their own fins. I mean, when you figure the cost of an air conditioner to have it installed is about $1,000, and you can go out there and spend, oh, 20, 30 minutes with a fin comb and straighten those fins up and get that airflow going, you've saved yourself some money right there. Okay. And this is, now, is this up on the roof where this is happening as well? That's correct. Now, this particular set of fins are up on the roof because each air conditioner has two sets, one on the roof uh, that the discharge air comes out, and then the other one is where the the fresh air that's inside the compartment, that air passes through. Okay. But primarily the one that we see more damage with is the one on the outside. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, if you, but and it's usually with, you know, hitting something or something, something Correct. hitting it yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So then after we clean those fins, then we can, uh, what, what's next then? Just, I, I, we've got a slide here, just rinsing them down. It is. I mean, occasionally you'll run into a situation to where you'll see a set of fins that maybe been in a real bad dust storm or maybe they've gotten a a lot of bugs and you may want to hose it down. 
because you know, here again it's like a radiator on, on our automobile if it gets all clogged up with gunk dirt bugs grasshoppers whatever you know airflow is not going to come through if the airflow can't come through we don't get rid of the heat and that's the only way we get the heat from inside the compartment to get it out any advantage to using like a, a pressure washer or something like that well, my reluctance to use a pressure washer is because those fins on that air conditioner are so uh, so small and the real fragile uh, aluminum mm -hmm. that if you if you hit that pressure washer just right, you'll bend those fins over and now you're creating more problems for yourself. That's right. You might get rid of Mr. Grasshopper, but you're going to have a bigger problem in the end, right? <laughs> That's right. So usually a garden hose and a little old hand brush is, is all you need. Okay. Now we have to be careful because uh, those fins are sharp. So you know, my recommendation is is that if you Got any concerns about it, but wear a pair of gloves. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we're going to uh, return in just a couple of minutes with uh, more from the Texas RV professor. We're going to talk a little bit about electricity and how uh, how you have to be careful with you know the combination of, of your air conditioner and having the right electricity is, is very, very important. And then we're going to have some questions from you folks. And so stay with us right here on the Texas on on Ask the Professor with the Texas RV Professor. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. 